we received a call from Ramp Church, which was previously Thomas Row Baptist Church. A special portion of their pews were going to be given away because they heard that I was building a church. Well, I really wasn't building a church. 12 years being somewhere and you're only 24. Around the table with Vicki. Just like gathering around the dinner table with loved ones and friends, we're here to share stories, insight, and inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Around the Table with Vicki. I am your co-host, Christopher Runk, and to my right is the, sh- the woman that the show is all about, <laughs> Vicki Runk. How are you today? Hello, everybody. So excited today. We have a special guest. Our very first guest, and I, uh, I had the great pri- privilege of introducing him. Uh, he uh, someone that really is family uh, That's right. to us and uh, has, has been a part of our, our organization. I don't like to call him a staff member because no. he really is family, <laughs> uh, but folks, Patrick Hart. Patrick, say hi. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's an honor. Glad to be here. Patrick's uh, part of our admissions and marketing team. He sure is. And uh, probably from the age of, I believe, 12. 12. Yeah. Right? Definitely 12. homegrown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He uh, probably found his love for seniors um, coming to our care facilities, much like my story, probably growing up inside those care facilities with his mother, who was Definitely. a fabulous activities director. Absolutely. And uh, he has grown up. And uh, how are you now, Patrick? I'm 24. 24. Yeah. So 12, 12 years. years with us. Yeah. Goodness. And uh, 12 years being somewhere and you're only 24. So that's yeah. pretty good. That's yes. really good. <laughs> yes. Uh, and what a story that is. I remember when you came to me and, you know, 12 years. You were tall at 12. You're tall I now. So I, I never could I say I was looking because you were always eye level. Um, and you said, you know, Miss Vicki, I really want to help my mom. Mm-hmm. And I can remember that moment. And I said, sure, you can just come to work with her and you can work with the residents. And through the next couple of years, you would have gone to then to say, I really want to take her program into the schools. Tell us a little bit about that. So we started, I started at 12, got my work permit and worked through all of that. And once I started working more in depth with it um, through the local high schools, we Mm -hmm. integrated, I guess, a program into... The Generations program. Yes. Yes. The Generations program. That was, that was a lot of fun. I still have a lot of volunteers that come into all of our communities, but it, it really started with middle school, high school age students that maybe had to do community service mm-hmm. or, you know, were trying to go down that path or maybe simply just didn't know what they wanted to do and thought, well, let's, let's try it. Let's mm-hmm. see. Like a junior volunteer kind of right. thing. Right. Yes. And it's exactly how I got started. Yeah. I started as a volunteer and here we are all those years later, but I can't tell you how many people I've had come through and it's like, oh yeah, I remember you, you know, mm-hmm. or yeah, yeah, you you helped mom all those years ago or that type of thing. And, and the other day we were talking on the phone on the fact that you're only 24 and so many um, families, potential residents' families will come through and say, oh, how old are you? Was that just yesterday when you were in the crib? And little do they know that you've got 12 years of experience. Such a great story of how the Lord called you so early. And yesterday, Christopher, we talked about how that I felt like at age six, God gave me a special part of my heart that just was driven towards seniors and, you know, how they were going to be cared for during the day, how they're going to get groceries into their house. And so I do believe that a young age, God calls us. And yet another story here today about how the Lord really sensitized your heart for Mm -hmm. senior care. Definitely. Very early. Yeah, it was great. And even looking back, I always tell people that or that I have 12 years in in the business, they don't believe me. (laughs) But as I go through the story, they're like, wow, that is truly remarkable. And it it really gives you a perspective Mm -hmm. for the families to be like, um, to understand what we do as a family business, um, which you guys do each and every day with all of your buildings. Um, But it, it truly is remarkable as someone in our position and admissions, it's from the gate, they know that we mean business and we're here, we're here for them because you guys were there for me yeah. as, as really a child in middle school. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's so remarkable. Special. I love to sit and chat with Patrick and to bring back those memories. Cause I lived every bit of it with you. And now to watch you just flourish and bloom, let's talk about the fact that you've been through the administrator and training program yes. and we're so super excited to hope that you'll be with us the rest of your life. And yes. 
And how cool was it to know that from the very beginning you knew what your career was going to be? So many people, so many kids, 18, mm-hmm. 19 years old, are searching. And I've even had college students that have gone and gotten a degree, and they're like, I don't know why I got that, because it's not what I really want to do. So what a blessing it was that God granted you that vision so young and how you're helping so many families and so many residents. I couldn't be more proud of you. I feel like I'm your mama. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's it's remarkable. Coming in um, at such, such a young age, I guess you could say, um, I knew right away that after I spent, you know, just really a few days or weeks even in the program that I knew that I could make a difference. Um, and it's always it's always a blessing to know that you can try it, Mm -hmm. you know, and and that's what anybody that asks, why did you start so early? Well, because I tried it, I liked it, Mm -hmm. I was good at it. Mm -hmm. So if you meet all of those, um, if you meet all of those criteria Mm -hmm. in in life, Mm -hmm. it's probably what God wants you to do. Absolutely. Well, as we can tell, Patrick is extremely passionate Mm -hmm. and that's the reason he's on our team. So today we want to talk about our daytime program, a daytime adult daycare by Runk and Pratt and kind of explain to listeners and folks what what that is. I and mean, there's probably some people in the area that don't even know that it's out there and as an option. Uh, so that's something we hope to, hope to cover today. Um, but to kick it off, I think it's important for folks to realize where it's at, what's the purpose of it, what me- need does it meet. And uh, mom, I know, um, you know, probably at this point, eight, nine years ago, um, here at 1208 Paraville Road, mm-hmm. which is also our corporate office, right. But back in the day, before we purchased it and uh, rehabbed it, it used to be an old food line building. It did. And you would drive by, and I, I remember countless conversations of you just saying that that, that would be an incredible senior center of, of some sort, right? And you just saw it being full of life and being an incredible um, asset to the community. Back in the day, you were like, it's going to be a, a bingo hall. <laughs> hall. I want it to be a giant bingo hall. I'm like, man, that's a big bingo hall. Mm. But I know that's always been a passion of yours. And now uh, it's not a bingo hall. I think it's something even a little bit better because it meets the need. But tell us a little bit about what daytime is and uh, the need that it meets. Yeah, so daytime by Runkin Pride is, has been a passion of mine for a long, long time. And one of the things that I shared with the admissions team, which Patrick is a part of, is the need to minister and to reach out and support what I call and several other experts in senior living call the sandwich generation. And you say, now, what's that mean, Vicki? Well, it is a an adult in their 50s or early 60s that are, you know, caring for that college age student. And some of them still have high school. If you've had children late in life, you're still in those high school years so you're getting up making lunches and making sure you go into the ball games or you're 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 got a cheerleader in the family and that's you know 20 plus hours Mm -hmm. a week and then you still got a a mom and a dad that may be in their you know later 70s early 80s and they they may need some help and it's going to keep you from being able to be in in, with your children uh, or even some of the college functions that's going on that can keep us 50 year olds Yep, still one. Uh, Very busy. And so I call that the sandwich generation. We're sandwiched between two areas of responsibilities. And it can be extremely stressful on a family because you know mom and dad need you and you know your kids need you. And so that's what daytime is really for. Uh, It's to be able to drop mom off and go do the school functions in the middle of the day and then come back and get her by six o'clock and know that she's cared for she's entertained and patrick you can hop in she's entertained she's uh they're going on trips they're just doing all kinds of cool things talk about what all we have in the daytime center the options are endless so if just as walking through the daytime center you're just step back into kind of this aesthetically designed um center if you will um, so for the activities point of view, you, you've got the, they do a lot of devotions. They do a lot of um, things in the chapel, which they'll move the pews aside and they'll play balloon volleyball or that type of thing, just to take advantage of the sheer square footage or the size mm-hmm. of the center, which is industry setting as far as I'm concerned. Um, as far as trips, they go strawberry picking, apple picking. They took the guys, they had a small group of gentlemen around Father's Day last year. They all went fishing mm-hmm. at a local little uh, lake or pond. Um, so really the options are endless. And yeah. the activities department over there does a fantastic job of kind of adjusting things as the department or as the center grows. 
because what might be successful for the group on a Monday might not be mm-hmm. as exciting or eventful for the group on Tuesday. That's a good point because you don't have to sign up to come Monday through Friday. You can pick what days you want to come. So mm-hmm. there are some folks that will come Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Right. There are some folks that just come Tuesday, Thursday. Um, there are some that only come in the afternoon, some that right. only come in the morning. So it's super flexible with whatever that family needs. And he was mentioning all the spaces. It's about 15,000 square feet, which is industry st- standard i mean beyond industry standards and so we want to we want to put that out there to you that it's not just a room and we're not just coloring there's so many things when i designed that daytime center we went back way in the 50s and so we've got some old timey pictures on the wall we you know well, talking about I, I, root beer and old I, Coca-Cola. I think we talk about a little bit about the design of it right because mm-hmm. that is what makes daytime so special we yes. have so many people that come into the property and they're like, I, I would have never imagined this being here. I've never seen anything like it. I can tell you from running social media pages, we put out posts about it. I have people from all across the nation writing in and say, hey, mm-hmm. is there anything similar to this in, in, in my Ohio, state of Oregon or, yeah. or right. whatever? Right. And that makes us feel really <laughs> great. Does, yes. But I know the design, which is what I'll call a town center. That's right. right? Mm-hmm. Um, can you speak a little bit about yeah. how that concept came? Yeah, so, you know, typically in the late 70s, early 80s, a resident will start to um, begin to have memory lapse, some sort of a memory issue going on. And so to put them in an environment in which they remember the most, which for that group right now is Mm -hmm. the 50s, um, you're not going to mess up when you put them in the 50s because they're going to remember the songs, which we do play overhead music of all the old 50s songs. They're going to remember the sock hop. They're going to remember being in an ice cream store with the root beer floats, like I mentioned earlier, and the old Coca-Cola Floats and and so all of our design over there is reverted back to the fifties. We we've got furniture in there that are like old tires and motorcycles, and the men just love it. And we have a fountain in the middle that they all gather at, sort of like a town center. Um, and and it's just super cool. It's it's very eclectic. It's the environment says it all that we went above and beyond to make sure that their days are just filled with so much. It's about the stimulation of the environment. There's multiple rooms for activities. There's a movie theater, the Runkin' Pratt movie theater. There will be a sensory room down the road. There's an entire chapel called the Pratt Chapel. Uh, There is a general store. Uh, There's a a beauty spot. There is a beauty spot. We have a beautician that comes in every Wednesday, and you can sign up for those services. And I don't know about everybody listening, but that, that to me is a fantastic option because if you didn't get to get mom or dad to the hairstylist and because of a sickness or the weather and you just need us to fix that problem for you, we can do that. The other thing is if there's an accident, we have a shower. Our staff is certified. They're all trained to get them all cleared up and cleaned up. If if we've had some sort of spill or an accident, there is a clinic that she can he or she can lay down and take a little nap if they've just had too much for the day. So we've really kind of thought of it all. And the biggest thing is, is that we're licensed by the state of Virginia. So we have inspectors coming in just like in our care centers, and they're making sure and holding us accountable to make sure we're doing everything right. And uh, we also take veterans benefits. Talk to us a little bit about that, Patrick. The veterans, the VA is a huge part of what we do because like I, like we've all been talking about, this is truly industry setting. And when someone comes and walks through, I mean, our veterans deserve the, absolute. the absolute best. Um, and I think that when someone walks through the daytime center, it's it's remarkable. Um, I was touring actually with a veteran the other day and she just, the, the wife broke down in tears just because she, she just had no idea there was something like this for her husband that he fought actually in world war two. Um, and he's doing fine at Mm -hmm. home doing great, but she wants to get back to work. Mm -hmm. She's been staying home to take care of dad. And it's just one of those things that it's time. He needs something to do during the day. So in tune that that's something that the VA um, has benefits for depending on where they served, when they served and all that good stuff. But the VA is a huge part, a huge benefit to our veterans and advocates and that type of idea to steer So a lot of our listeners don't know that they may even qualify for some of those benefits. Right. 
And so if you have a question about that, we're going to put some information out here at the end of the show so you can make sure you get in touch with Patrick. He can take you through. I was going to ask you about that. Do you remember a story that we've been here almost two years now? In May, it'll be two years. Is there a story that sticks out to you that just really just never left you? Definitely. So in our actual inaugural year, um, I had a lady that was touring for her brother. Um, she had stopped working. She was an RN. She stopped working when her um, brother got sick, decided to take care of him. Um, the, what brought them through the door was the option of they have a tub at home, and she, it was unsafe for her to get him into the tub. So he needed something to do, and that was a service that we could offer was while he was here for the day, we'll get him cleaned up, we'll get him showered, because it was unsafe for them to do that at home. Um, but that being said, what, what really stuck with me was the fact that they grew in the program. She was, we're going to try this, let's do a half a day. Well, that lasted about two weeks, maybe. Okay, let's do a full day. And as, as the program grew and they got more involved and he got more involved, he actually started involving himself in the activities as far as with the other participants. Come on, let's go do this. Come on, let's go do that. And he began to seem like to be running the program sometimes, which is great to <laughs> get them that. involved. Right. right. So come to find out by the end of, uh, I would say about a year, he's going now five days a week wow. and all day. Mm -hmm. So not just half days. So for me, as somebody sitting back and looking, it's, it's remarkable because it's not just something that we can sit here and talk about. It works. Mm -hmm. And it's something that is a need that people don't even know is out there. Right. Um, but in tune, that gentleman has even moved into one of our senior communities now. So it's it's designed, I guess, to be that way. That's right. It's a segue. So right. it gets you and a lot of our staff come over and work. Absolutely. So some of our administrators will spend time at the daytime center and that's done on purpose. Right. So that as they get to know them, the residents and their families, whichever community mm -hmm. they end up going to right. when full time care is needed. There's a little bit of a relationship that's mm -hmm. already been formed. So we really have thought of it all. And it's um it's it's one of our senior related services that's been the best kept secret. And we want to make sure all of our listeners know it's available. Yes. Well, I want I want to build on what you just said. We thought of it all. Talk a little bit about the integration, which this is a whole nother episode, but right. talk about the integration of even our Runga Pratt nursing school um, and how the students over there and the, the, the nurse teachers can mm -hmm. come over just next door. Just next door. And can uh, integrate with the seniors and uh, provide um, services mm -hmm. and be a resource to, between the nursing school and the daytime center. Right. So this is another episode. But in 2018, Christopher and I and uh, the rest of our team decided that we would uh, integrate into our company the Runkin Pratt School of CNA Instruction. It came primarily at a wonderful time because little did I know 2020 was going to mm -hmm. hit. And we all know that was the year of COVID. And it was so instrumental during that year to fill all the, the staffing gaps. And so we started the CNA school on Waterlick Road in a very small portion of a building over there mm -hmm. that we owned. And within six months, we knew that that little school was going to grow beyond that space. And hence the whole, you know, food line shopping center, we're going to purchase that. That's where it was going to go. And so our corporate offices are here at 1208 Paraville. I'm sure anybody that's driven in Forest knows where we are. We're all lit up. And then right next to our corporate offices in the same building is the CNA School of Nursing Instruction. And we literally have kicked out about 160 graduates since 2018, Christopher, our family's had the wonderful pleasure of being at several graduations. It's supported by local churches that give scholarships at time to these girls that can't afford it. Um, we've been able to really highlight all of those services. We do registered med aid certification. We do the CNA certification and we get, we're getting into CPR and all of the stuff. But one of the things I'm most proud of is the fact that they can go next door, right? They don't even have to leave the building. It's literally in the building. We go through a door here, and they're in the daytime world. Mm -hmm. So we have registered nurses that are our instructors that are right here every day. So if an emergency does happen, it's really great that, that they're here. Um, and then our CNAs that are sitting in that classroom, they're in the clinical training. They can go next door and just learn how to be around 
the geriatric population, which is an endless source of uh, really being able to learn it, right? Mm-hmm. So some girls will get into it and like, ah, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Um, so we can really push the two groups together and they get a step up by that. So that's a really great point. Yeah, I think it's just well, kudos to you, well yeah. thought out. Um, the the little details that went into the daytime center. I know we have a little company history throughout the daytime center. We have Vicky Soda Shop mm-hmm. and and uh, Doctor Norman's Clinic and the Spout Spring General Store. Talk a little bit about how we. Uh, weaved in some company history into the naming of those spaces. Yeah, we really did. We put your papa's name on the clinic, and, and Chandler's got a um, an emporium over there, which is supposed to be like for shopping for all kinds of new and do- different things. If you know Chandler, that's him. Mm-hmm. Um, so each little place took on our personality. What I love most about the history of it is that we received a call from Ramp Church, which was previously Thomas Rowe Baptist Church, that a special portion of their pews were going to be given away. And uh, they wanted me to come over because they heard that I was building a church. Well, I really wasn't building a church. I was building a chapel inside the daytime center. And I actually had already purchased a hundred and some chairs to go in that space. And uh, I sent you over, Christopher, yep. and uh, at the time, Sheriff Ayers, who's back being sheriff, <laughs> but at the time he worked for us. And, they, and you said, Mom, I think you need to come over here and look at it. And I wasn't really excited about it because I didn't really want to put pews in there. I wanted it to be modern and, and be able to pick those stackable chairs up and move them all around. But what happened when I walked into that church was amazing. Well, you were very busy that day. I was. And you, you sent me over there. And as soon as I walked into the church, uh, growing up, I grew up in that church. And uh, we, we always, we were, we had one spot we always sat in, which was the back left corner of the church. And as soon as I opened up those doors to the church, what was amazing was they had cleared out all the rest of the pews. You know, there was other churches, Liberty University came over and got a few for historical purposes. But guess which pews were left? The back left corner, where we sat, where I grew up in, where you sat, and uh, we had the opportunity. I was like, Mom, you, you need to come over here and see this. Yeah, so we say our pews are anointed. Um, and the, one of the things that we did, we, had a, we have a great maintenance guy that put some wheels on the bottom, just totally renovated them to where we can push them right out mm-hmm. the door and get them out of the way. But I really felt like God gave us that. And pretty mm-hmm. much what he was saying to me that day is, you know, you've worked really hard and you've taken care of so many of, of my sheep, which is really what we've done. And um, I want to give you a little piece of your history, and I want you to remember where you came from. And that was really powerful. To, I didn't want those old pews. <laughs> I really didn't. But what a story that is and how the Lord used that. And we, we wanted that to be for years to come, that the history of where we had sat and worshiped God and where we had raised our family, those very pews that we sat in uh, were, is now in the daytime center. And that's super special to me. I love to tell that story. And and so, um, yeah, we've done a lot of things that kind of really matter. Yeah. And you, you mentioned that those pews are on casters and we can move them out. What's so great about the Pratt Chapel is we open that up to the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have That's where we have our nursing school graduations and we can move those pews out and have uh, extra entertainment come in. And it's just a great multi-purpose space that our seniors can enjoy for entertainment and all sorts of different things. Yeah, we partner with so many people in the community that need space And we're always happy to help the community if they need space and what a great space that is. Uh, But we've also done some trainings in there for the local community on heart disease and physical therapy. And we've had some specialists come in and talk about diabetes and senior care. And so it's not unusual for us to just open up a free clinic to the community to get education on aging. We wanted this specific location that if people were just hurting and they're like, man, I don't know where to turn to. I don't know who to go to to find out why dad's not acting right anymore. I don't know where to go to to find out what doctor do I need to go to. Um, I don't have a son or a daughter here in Lynchburg. Who do I reach out to? We wanted that big sign in front of the old food line. It it is pretty cool now. We've really, you know, we've done it up better than a food line. We're actually sitting where the meat department used to be. <laughs> we're, so in the, we're, we're in the butcher shop. Yeah. That's right. Um, we wanted the, the community to say, 
I'm going to go through those doors and see if somebody's there to help me. And there always is. Um, Monday through Friday from 830 to 5, there's always somebody sitting at that receptionist desk that can assist you, get you in touch with Patrick, um, get you in touch with a social worker type person that can meet with you and talk to you about what are the plans here? What do we need to do? Information. You know, knowledge is powerful. And one other thing we'll, we'll touch on real quickly is, is there actually is an outdoor space as well. There's a beautiful outdoor yeah. space that's mm-hmm. probably 10 times bigger than it needs to be, right, Patrick? Beautiful. Yeah, and, they do um, so much out there. do so much. And it's all um, tucked in behind the building. So you smell the Mexican place next door. <laughs> that's delicious. So we always get super hungry when we're out there. But And Lori's restaurant. And Corner Burger and, and Corner Burger, Lori's. It's just right. all the good smells. plug everybody right. in here. Um, but they've got beautiful umbrellas out there, really nice places to lounge or go out and eat their lunch. And sunshine is super important. Absolutely. Don't forget the ice cream socials. Well, yeah, that's those true. are important. And watermelon. Right. Lots right. of watermelon. Yeah. yeah. Patrick, some of the outings they go on, what, what would you say are some of their, their most uh, favorite things to do? And So it depends on the season. Um, if it's around Christmas time, they did a lot of going around and looking at Christmas decorations, things like that. Um, fall leaves, mm-hmm. things like that. They do a lot of some of the activities where they don't even have to get off the bus if they right. don't want to. Um, if they go out to get ice cream, they may run up here to Monkey Joe's or they may run over to one of the other places in town. And we love to support local businesses. There mm-hmm. is nothing I love better. The daytime Facebook page is fabulous because we're putting up real pictures that's really happening in real time. Right. And I love that about it because families can see, hey, I'm really what I'm paying for. I'm getting here. That's right. Um, and I love to see them pulled up at local businesses, taking pictures with the daytime bus and the seniors in it with the business business behind it. And we certainly appreciate all the the local businesses that welcome our seniors in. We're out and about a lot, whether it be daytime or Runkin Pratt. I I always say they have more energy than I do. They're going (laughs) constantly. Always. 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 Which is fantastic. I'm hearing the the resounding theme is socialization of seniors. and, And depression is so, so prevalent in the geriatric population. We think sometimes mental health is only for the young. Oh, you know, they're going through the teenage years and we've got to press. And and I'm not discounting that because there's a lot of that. But we forget that there's an older population that suffers from depression and anxiety just as much. And so part of our rehab for that, part of our therapy for that is to connect them with people. And, you know, you remember your nanny, Patrick, you remember her too, which was Nanny Runk. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that she loved better than just talking to someone. Absolutely. And that's why some of our facilities, it's so important for it the volunteers to come in and you you know a lot of people i'll say they'll say to me well i don't have a talent i don't know how i can volunteer oh my goodness it's just your time that we Mm -hmm. need Mm -hmm. and you will feel so much fuller and filled up for it well as we wrap up here patrick tell us uh, how they can find information so you can call any of the communities directly and ask to speak to myself or alicia Um, But you can definitely call the corporate office and they'll direct you to the daytime center. They'll direct you to any anybody that can possibly ask uh, answer your questions. I promise we'll do that. And that's 434-237-2268. Or you can visit us at www.runkandpratt.com. Patrick, thank you for being here with us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you both. man. We appreciate you. Well, Mom, as we, uh, we got to have one of your famous quotes, right? right. You know, we've got to end every show with it. So what did you pick out for us this week? Well, we just talked about um, depression and anxiety in our senior population. And one of the things I really want to encourage our listeners to do is kind of make sure you have a beautiful mindset. So that's why I chose this today. A beautiful day begins with a beautiful mindset. When you wake up, take a second to think about what a privilege it is to simply be alive and healthy. The moment you start acting like life is a blessing, I assure you it will start to feel like one as well. Time spent appreciating is time worth living. So I want to encourage all of our listeners today to be grateful and realize that life itself is a blessing. Thanks, guys. Thank you all Thank for you. listening for Around the Table with Vicki, and we'll see you next week. See you next time.